Kia ora, good evening. For our first story tonight, I'm joined in studio by Managing Director of QTV, Tom Conroy. Good evening, Tom. You have some interesting news for our viewers. I do. Good evening, Margaret. Uh, it's quite a major announcement. It's a change in direction for the company, QTV, um, from a broadcast and production house model to being just a production house. Um, essentially, the two arms of the company have to stand alone in terms of their financial return. And it was getting to the stage where it looked like our a broadcast platform across the country would struggle to pay for itself and that's proved to be. So at the end of the financial year, which is today, we've had to make that call to cut that arm adrift and concentrate on what we're now very good at and that's making programming for other people. So it means from midnight on April the 10th, which is Friday, we will cease broadcasting around the country uh, as Q Television. But we continue uh, with our work in the South and it is not a closure, it is definitely a change of direction. It's um, a major decision but it's a progressive one for the company. It is and it's totally pragmatic. I mean sentiment doesn't pay invoices and it has to come down to the dollar and it was struggling. The model we basically had and set up was um, to cast the network as far and wide as possible around New Zealand so that South and businesses and South and entities could promote their products and services. And whilst we had good usage of the platform by outside parties, people from Auckland and Canterbury and Westport, Southland had to do their bit. So we went out to the market here and we said, if you want to keep this, you have to use it. It's a bit like the Southerner train. We all like to have the train there, but nobody was getting on for the ride, except that train only went to Dunedin. Our train went to Auckland and all around the country. But still, we couldn't convince enough businesses to say, we want this platform to promote our goods. And without Southland doing their bit in their corner, it just isn't financially viable. And we have to be responsible as directors to go in the direction um, where we are fiscally sound. It does give you scope to focus on things such as the corporate work, which you've grown to develop in the business over the years. Absolutely, and that's going to be one of a numerous arms that we're going to keep. Uh, corporate work, we talk about you know, people like Southport, for instance, have used it for years for that type of material, and it's, it's often unsung. Um, but a big part of the business will be making programs for other television stations. We've had two real, very big success stories. One is Gourmet Safari TV and Zed picked that up. That was a great six-part documentary series, Frank Bunce, Richard Till, and I think we all know how uh, classy that was as a production. And then recently University Challenge picked up by Prime. Uh, 31 episodes and rating very well indeed and, and everyone's sort of saying well you're a genuine production house now have a look at that as a standalone business and that's what we did and that's what uh, we think is the way forward. There are other arms as well you're talking perhaps about the, the ticker tech operation that you, you run from here as well? Very important that people realise that this premises remains here with the help of SIT who continue to work with us um, on building this new venture um, that we will continue to run the SIT Centre Stage Theatre. What a success that's been since uh, blowing our own trumpets since we took it over. <laughs> uh, a lot of great shows in there. And associated with that is the Ticket Direct business. We are a, a, an outlet for that. Um, and we, we put through a lot of tickets. So people can still come down in Don Street. We want them to and, and buy those tickets. And look at the shows we've got on the moment. Fleetwood Mac coming and Rod Stewart and, and Neil Diamond. So we don't want people to think, oh my goodness, Q is an operator. We're doing exactly, as far as the public's walking past this, these premises, what we were doing yesterday. That will continue. There has been some pretty cool achievements. One of them is a world record, another telethon that was a huge success as well. Yes, yeah, so I, I think when we list the achievements, and uh, I've already been asked that, to, you know, what are the boxes we ticked? And I said, telling Southland stories beyond the province's bounds. Uh, and I think that's something that other provinces haven't been able to do. The other stations that started as regional entities haven't been able to branch out onto the national network, and we have. Um, and I think telling those stories to people beyond, you know, that we already know what the stories are, but we wanted to boast about them, and we've done that well, I, I believe. Uh, I think the $820,000 we raised for the MRI scanner was a big achievement. That was when telethons were you know, a, for, a forgotten mechanism. Um, we launched one here, it was great fun, and uh, ourselves and the SDHB put together an impressive package and we went out beforehand and got the interest and then we picked up the extra money on the night and it made a huge contribution towards, you know, what is an essential part of the South and services. The world record, it's a bit of, it's not just a selfish thing because I was part of it with Tim, <laughs> um, it, it drew a lot of attention to South and it was a top rated program for a couple of hours that weekend of all the stations as people watched those 
you know, those last couple of hours. But I think I look back at some of the international sporting events. We had the Davis Cup here and the National Swimming Champs, and we filmed both on the same day for three days in a row. And the hockey, um, the International World Cup hockey qualifiers, which meant our standards were right up there. I mean, the Davis Cup, it went to, in India, 600 million people saw that. And um, the Community Trust, of course, sponsored it at that time to get into that kind of market. So I, I think we can tick those boxes and say we did that very well. We did a lot of things very well after 19 years. And we're going to continue to do that. <laughs> continue to do Absolutely. That. Thank you for joining us, Tom. Sure. All right, stay with us after the break. Shakespeare and Fairy Tales Plus moves to retain skilled workers on our farms. Welcome back. A new Dairy Workplace Accord will be launched in May as part of a range of industry actions aimed at helping farmers retain skilled workers. The Quality Workplace Accord will see dairy organisations work together to create better working environments for farmers. We spoke to the Dairy NZ South and Regional Leader to find out more. So the Workplace Accord is about uh, all the uh, different partners working in the dairy industry um, being, uh, sort of having a, being on the same page about um, uh, basically ra raising the levels around compliance and, and um, on-farm um, employment practices. Um, so we, we've got some great employers in the industry, but we actually want everybody at that level. So um, there's, there's requirements um, by 2025, we're gonna need another net, I think it's about 2,700 workers in the industry. We'll also have in that time 27,000 leaving, either due to just moving on or retiring in the industry, so we need, we'll need about uh, 27,000 um, skilled workers to come in, and we also need about 8,000 um, workers with with qualifications. As the and as, as the industry's grown and it's become more technical, um, we need a higher higher level of um, understanding among, amongst our workers. But to get that, we've got to have the right environment for people to work in. Why is it so difficult to attract and retain skilled workers? I suppose um, traditionally dairying has always been long hours, getting up early in the morning, late at night. Um, things have, um, times have changed. Um, we've obviously, there's a lot more technology in the industry now. But um, uh, <coughs> it's probably getting farmers all on the same page and at the same level. We've got some great employers out there, and it's getting everybody to that standard to, to bring those, to actually attract workers into the industry. Yeah. So is this bringing all partners from the dairy industry together? Yes, that's right. So we've got um, Dairy Women's Network, uh, Federated Farmers, New Zealand Young Farmers, and I think there's also uh, DECAN's uh, Dairy Companies Association of New Zealand involved. Um, yeah, so it's, so we're the accords amongst all the partners, so we've all got the same expectations um, of what we're looking to achieve. And is this something that the industry has really needed? Oh, certainly, yeah, um, and there's, there's no doubt about that. It's, it's something that... Um, across the board, uh, retention's um, always been a, an issue, but we're finding that's changing now. There's a lot of farmers, um, uh, farmers traditionally have, have worked on their own on smaller farms um, and they haven't had the staff, um, but as, as the industry's grown, there's been a requirement for you know, understanding how to manage staff well and, and have those um, have a good working environment to retain staff, um, and I say it drives productivity in the industry. Um, getting compliant, you know, compliance is, um, has got to be there, and, uh, but it's lifting, lifting the um, the whole the whole um, game above above compliance. It's actually seeing seeing some change around, um, uh, as I say, it's hours of work, um, and 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 the health and safety. You know, it, from it being um, compliance to being it's there because we know it's good for our, our people. But it's a, it's probably more around the the um, the standards of employment. So the um, the the with the work environment. Um, so, sort of, so it's a, an attractive place to work and people want, actually want to come and work in the dairy industry. Businesses are spending more on research and development and expenditure is expected to rise again in 2015. Business expenditure on research and development of BERD increased by $53 million last year to $1,246 million. 
Total expenditure on R&D in New Zealand remained around $2.6 billion last year, despite the increase in BERD as R&D expenditure by government in higher education sectors such as universities fell. As well as the increase in business expenditure, the 2014 survey also found businesses performing R&D increased by 58% in 2012, taking the total to 1549 for last year, according to Statistics New Zealand. Doubtful Sound has been voted second in New Zealand's top 10 destinations to experience from a shortlist of 20 iconic locations in a Trans-Tasman poll. There were more than 2,000 votes from a mixed audience of Kiwi, Australian and international respondents in the Experience Oz and New Zealand survey. Participants were asked to consider things like cultural, historic and architectural features of the areas vying for the top spot, activities on offer and whether it was over commercial or simply considered beautiful. Taupo took out the top spot, although didn't feature at all last year. Queenstown moved from third last year to fourth in 2015 and Milford Sound was knocked off the top ten list completely this year. Southland students took to the stage last night for the Regional University of Otago Shilawin Shakespeare Festival. Around 100 students from five Southland schools designed, directed and acted excerpts from their favourite Shakespeare plays as part of the Shakespeare Globe Centre New Zealand Festival. 5,500 high school students are participating in the festival across 23 regions throughout the country. Students must put together a five or 15 minute scene from a Shakespeare play. The best of each time frame is selected to be performed at the National Festival in Wellington for the Queen's Birthday weekend. Queenstown's Wakatipu High School took out the best five-minute act and Invercargill's James Hargis College won the best 15-minute act with a student-directed performance of the Shakespearean tragedy, Macbeth. James Hargis College student Drew MacArthur took out the best actor of the night and will also go to Wellington to perform at the National Festival. We'll check out some of the fairy tale characters who went to school today shortly, but first let's take a look at the weather. Nominations are open for the 2015 Southland Environment Awards. This year marks the 20th year of the awards and Environment Southland wants to hear about anyone who's making a difference in our region. Individuals, schools, farmers, community groups and businesses. If that's you or someone you know, get an entry form and let's recognise and celebrate these environmental achievers. Entries close May 1st. Contact Environment Southland for details today. And taking a look at the weather for today, Tuesday the 31st of March. Auckland coming in in the high with 3 o'clock today on 20 degrees, Wellington 18, 16 for Christchurch, 18 for Dunedin, 17 in Queenstown, Gore and Invercargill both coming in on 16 and 14 for Stewart Island. Temperatures are on the rise tomorrow and we can expect fine conditions apart from areas of morning cloud, high cloud increasing in the evening with westerly winds. Highs of 20 forecast for Winton and Wyndham tomorrow. For Invercargill, partly cloudy conditions, chasing a high of 20 there along with Gore. And cloudy conditions in Queenstown and Tianau also 19 for Tianau and 21 the high for Queenstown tomorrow. And the marine forecast for Fovo, westerly 15 knots to westerly 25 knots, southwest swell of 3 metres with a rough sea at times. And for Pusiga, westerly 25 knots to northwest 35 knots, southwest swell of 4 metres changing to northwest 1 metre, and very rough sea in the south. And in the long range forecast, heading looking to Thursday. High cloud increasing with rain developing about the coast toward evening, northwesterlies picking up then easing at night, becoming fine in the morning on Friday with winds turning northerly, scattered rain developing on Saturday with northwesterlies turning southwest with a few showers. All the fairy tale characters came together to create a little magic at a local primary school today. Pupils at Waihopai Primary School in Invercargill have been reading and learning about fairy tales at school this term and today kids had the chance to dress as their favourite character. Princes, princesses, knights and Fiona and Shrek, Woody from Toy Story, mermaids, fairies, Little Red Riding Hood, pirates and Jack who climbed the beanstalk all paraded their costumes at a special showcase this afternoon. The junior school also had the opportunity to invite grandparents or special friends to enjoy the afternoon's festivities. And that's all from us on the last day of March. Join us again tomorrow for more news from around the region. Till then, good night.